Welcome to Yates Makes. I'm Mark. Today I'm back with some more mask and tape printing, aiming for a kind of German expressionist inspired print. I absolutely love German expressionism. Kaffer Kollwitz, Kirchner, Emil Nolder, Otto Dix. You know, there's so much to look at. It's a really, really rich art movement or style to look to for inspiration. I find this process easier to start with a drawing. So here I am going to try and do a portrait. Um, portraiture, figurative work was a big feature of German Expressionism so that's what I'm going for. Hopefully it will show you, for those of you who've watched my other video on some of the basics of mask and tape printing, um, this video should highlight the versatility of this technique. Right, you'll notice I'm working from a source photo. I use Snapseed, fantastic free app. Let me know in the comments if you um, want a separate tutorial on how to edit to make your source photograph a little more expressionistic to work from. My drawing, very simple, graphite with a grey pro marker straight over the top. Great tip for drawing generally. Right, um, so I'm using a piece of clear polypropylene over the top of my image. And you'll notice too, I've photographed and printed out my image A5. My, my original A4 drawing was just a bit too big to work on. Right, the process. Double thickness masking tape. So I've got my cutting mat, my um, scalpel, craft knife, and I've just layered up a couple of pieces of masking tape on my cutting mat. Now, you want your outcome, or I want my outcome, to be quite expressionistic. So I love this part of the process. I am simply looking at my image and I'm judging as best I can some of the key shapes and cutting them out, chucking them on. Okay, we are abstracting a little bit from the drawing. So some sharp edges, simplified kind of geometric shapes are going to look good for this German expressionist style. Okay, you can stick things down, lift them off, refine them a bit. You know, it's a fat, really, really versatile technique. This gives you a lot of scope for making adjustments, improvements. And unlike lino and woodcut, you can actually add things back on. You know, with, with lino and woodcut, once you've cut, they're gone. With this, you're building up. So you're kind of working in the reverse, um, which gives you a little more scope, I think. And of course, it's cheaper. You don't need so much specialist equipment, which makes it a lot easier to do, and a bit less mess as well. Okay, so you can see I've blocked on some of the bigger shapes. I'm now working in some smaller details. I've got some hatched areas there. Basically just experimenting. Um, at the moment, still just looking at the image, judging separate to the image. Sometimes, though, you might need to just kind of offer up a slightly bigger bit of tape and rip it down. A ripped edge can look really good in parts as well. Contrast nicely with the sharp kind of scalpel um, blade cut edges. Um, stuck down, you know, this is quite thick polypropylene, so I can cut pieces whilst they're stuck to the polypropylene you know again really useful um, and I'm recycling parts as I as I cut bits off and they build up on my cutting mat I'm just kind of you're building up a little bank of possibilities really um, so well you can see there how it's building up cutting in once you've got some of these big areas filled um, can add a lot of character suggest some detail so I'm just putting some wrinkled highlights in there um, obviously you know you'd be surprised you can put amazingly small pieces of masking tape on um, so I'm going for like beard texture here and they do stay on through the print process um, uh, you know as you'll see once we start printing right sometimes you're going to need a more specific shape so single layer of masking tape over the area you need to fill, outline it with your pen or your pencil, peel that off, remember to stick it onto a base layer because you do want double thickness. Double thickness, probably should have said, 
we're working with double thickness tape um, purely because it just gives you a bit more relief off the surface of the polypropylene or the acetate or the acrylic or whatever you're using um, as your base for your, your print plate. Um, so you can see there I've just done a shape for the ear. Um, I did need that to be quite a specific shape. It was quite hard to judge. So just stick it on, trace it, and I'm off again, judging the shapes. Best fit. If you try and be too precise, I think you lose the character, you lose that expressionistic feel. Okay, another big shape that needed to be quite precise for the background. Again, base layer of tape down first. Trace shape on top. Cut that out. That should fit quite neatly, uh, quite neatly into that background area I need to fill. Okay, ready to go. Um, you can see a range of marks on there. This is a trial piece just for the sake of this video. Um, plenty of different mark making in there. Let's see how it prints. Right then, the big reveal. Um, you know, I'm always in the habit of peeling off half my uh, block prints first, just, just so I can check um, both sides. You can always add a bit more burnish in with the back of the wooden spoon, even add a bit more ink if you need it. So there you go. Um, there's bits I'd, I'd change if I was spending longer, um, especially up around the head, you know, the forehead, but definitely achieved what I was after in terms of this expressionistic style of printmaking. Look, have a go for yourselves. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, like, share, subscribe, comment below. Take it easy.